Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's House Worship. Glad to see all of you on this beautiful day that the Lord has given us on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, you can tell it's getting closer to the S word, school, right? Uh, activities start tomorrow and families are getting away. And so maybe there's a lot listening on the radio or watching later on on Facebook and YouTube. We're glad we're able to worship in all the ways we can, and especially in here in God's house here in O'Neill, Nebraska. As we gather for worship, uh, our order of service uh, is Divine Service 71 on page 151. It'll also be on your screens for you. Don't have anything other than a specialness of God's Word being presented to you today. pray that it'll be a blessing to you as we continue to uh, do things safely. Uh, it's been a custom for over a year and a half now, right? Uh, instead of standing greeting and shaking hands, we're going to have a word of prayer to ask God to bless our time. So let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this day. We ask you to bless our time in your house, wherever that may be, that your word would bless our hearts and our souls, that we continue to grow in our faith and share our faith so that more and more people would know about you. Bless with your Holy Spirit now as we worship your Son, Jesus. In his holy name we pray. Amen. We begin our worship then with our opening hymn, hymn number 680, Thine Amen, Thine the Praise. We'll stand for the last verse. O come, let us worship the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read responsibly the intro for the day. You open your hand. You satisfy the desires of every living thing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no life. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good Glory be to the Father and to the Son. <coughs> and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. Is now and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every We continue to carry on page 152. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. Father, you give your Son Jesus the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished into life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
the Old Testament reading for today, Sunday, August 8th, comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 8. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and now he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent the messenger to Elijah, saying, So many, so may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a broom tree, and he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under the broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsibly the gradual for the season. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Our epistle reading, reading comes from Ephesians chapter 4. This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their misunderstanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy, greedy to practices even every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do no sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption." Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. I invite the players to stand for reading the Holy Gospel and sing the Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. 
All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that has been given to me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God, he has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn number 809, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God's great mercy and peace are yours from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for proclamation this morning is the gospel lesson that was uh, from John chapter 6. I'd like to read again for you from the contemporary English version of the Bible. We hear about Jesus being the bread of life. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. I have told you already that you have seen me and still do not have faith in me. Everything and every one that the Father has given me will come to me, and I won't turn any of them away. I didn't come from heaven to do what I want. I came to do what the Father wants me to do. He sent me, and he wants to make certain that none of the ones he has given me will be lost. Instead, he wants me to raise them to life on the last day. My Father wants everyone who sees the Son to have faith in him and have eternal life. Then I will raise them to life on the last day. The people started grumbling because Jesus had said he was the bread that had come down from heaven. They were asking each other, Isn't he Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and mother? How can he say that he has come down from heaven? Jesus told them, Stop grumbling. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to life on the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach all of them. And so everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him will come to me. The only one who has seen the Father is the one who who has come from him. No one else has ever seen the Father. I tell you for certain that everyone who has faith in me has eternal life. I am the bread that gives life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and later they died. But the bread from heaven has come down, so that no one who eats it will ever die. I am that bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the life-giving bread that I give to the people of this world. This is the word. In the name of Jesus, dear Christian friends, the theme for the message this morning is No Ordinary Man. Seems like some people are just meant for greatness. I don't know if uh, having your father as Bruce Springsteen makes you a better equestrian driver, but writer. But uh, his daughter did get a silver medal uh, le- le- yesterday, I guess it was. Um, but there's some that just seem like because of who they're born to and their circumstances that they would have a great future. Uh, they jump to prominence. Often there's a story from their childhood uh, or teenage years with someone saying. I knew she or he or she would go far in life. There was always something special about him or her. For for example, Charlie Axel Woods, son of golf great Tiger Woods, comes to mind as someone of whom great things are expected. You know, he better play golf, right? Uh, He better be good, because dad sure was. No one would be surprised if he becomes a notable golfer. In fact, the surprise would be if he didn't meet those expectations. Likewise, no one was surprised when Michael Douglas, son of Kirk Douglas, went on to be a big star in his own right. And how about poor Bronny James? LeBron, Bronny, Ramon James Jr., uh, son of basketball star LeBron James. He's already showing great promise. He's He's been on ESPN a few times already. Right, uh, because of how good he's already in high school. Uh, sometimes, however, it's surprising to see how far someone from humble beginnings can rise to the top in their field. Not much was expected of them, but when they became noticed, some people, especially those who knew them best, said, who would have ever thought that he or she would grow up to do that? For example, Elon Musk, maybe you guys have heard of him. Uh, this year became the richest man in the world. His net worth is over $185 billion. I think he took a little ride out in the space not too long ago. right? But he started out as a janitor of a boiler room at a lumber mill. Marissa Mayer, CEO of Yahoo, has a net worth of $450 million. She started out as a checkout clerk. Madonna, now worth $800 million, started out as a cashier at a Dunkin' Donuts. I don't think we want our daughters to describe that kind of life, but uh, she had humble beginnings working at Dunkin' Donuts. Today, we look at Jesus 
when no one expected much of him. The son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How could he be this great prophet? Now John's gospel, of course, is very different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John lays out a different view of Jesus' life that fits his stated purpose for writing. These things are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And our text today follows in chapter 6 two of the signs which John used to point to the identity of Jesus. First, Jesus is followed by a large crowd to the Sea of Galilee. They've seen what he was doing for the sick, and they wanted more. Jesus asked Philip where they could buy bread. They didn't have a McDonald's nearby. So Philip replied, it was both a physical and an economic impossibility for them to feed the thousands of people that were gathered. Jesus took five barley loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 people, thousands of them. When the people saw it, they said, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. The next sign follows later in that evening that Jesus sent the disciples to the other side of the sea. And during the night, as the waves arose because of the strong wind, the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water. That was pretty amazing. Uh, They were terrified, though. Uh, They saw Jesus and thought he was a ghost. And Jesus says, It is I. Do not be afraid. And then immediately the boat reached the land to where they were going. So when the crowd followed, found Jesus the next day, they questioned him of how he got there. He told them they were looking for him. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves of bread. And shortly after, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now they could have thought, well, he's going to keep making bread for us. We're going to be eating good for a while. But he was thinking of something much better much deeper. The implications of what Jesus was saying finally struck some in the crowd. Is not this Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can we now, he now say, I came down from heaven. I know, you know where he went to school. I know what he's like. So they said, in effect, we saw him grow up. We know his parents. Where does he get off saying that he came from heaven? What gives him a right to say that? Well, we'll grant that he's done some amazing things, like the meal yesterday was great, Um, and the healing he's been doing is fantastic, but saying he's from heaven, that's just a little bit too far. That's like saying he's God. We don't believe it. So Jesus made some amazing claims throughout his ministry. John's Gospel records seven I am statements. Again, just saying I am was a very important thing back in the day. That was God's holy name, I am. So he was saying, I am God, and I am God because of these things that I am. Uh, He used statements like, I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the true vine. And I am the bread of life, which appears in our text today. While all these statements are true and deserve our attention, today's I am the bread of life is different from all the others uh, I am's in John's Gospel because it talks about food. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That, of course, was unthinkable for the Jewish people hearing him. It goes against God's law in Leviticus forbidding the consumption of any blood because blood is the life force of a creature. So to drink Jesus' blood and eat his flesh would be to consume the life force of Jesus. But really, that's the point, isn't it? Jesus would go on to say elsewhere in this gospel, Abide in me as I abide in you. Suddenly there's no need to be in the synagogue in order to be connected to Jesus. I am the bread of life. And Jesus abides in us, and we abide in him. In various ways, Christians celebrate Holy Communion, or Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, as you may call it, all around the world. And in these holy events... We hear echoes of what Jesus has said, I am the bread of life. All that bread around the world, connecting people to Jesus, connecting us with each other. So Jesus' claim to be the bread of life presents a choice for us. 
his claim offended some people, and they left. Some are skeptical of it today yet. His claim confused and continues to confuse some people, but they stuck with him and were blessed and found eternal life, just as Jesus promised. And we face similar choices today. One pastor put it like this, Jesus' claim offended the crowd who followed him then, the claim which still offends any who take it seriously today. For where we expect God to come in might, God comes in weakness. Where we look for God to come in power, God comes in vulnerability. And when we seek God in justice and righteousness, which is, after all, what we all expect from God, we find God, or rather found by God, in forgiveness and mercy. That's what God still offers us today. Forgiveness and mercy and the bread of life. We live in a time when this is sorely needed, isn't it? Forgiveness and mercy and the bread of life. The year 2020 will be remembered forever, right? It was a tough year. Many of us are glad that was over. Uh, We'd be even gladder if 21 is over maybe, right? Uh, It's been a little bit better. Uh, But the overarching story of the COVID-19 pandemic was definitely at the heart of 2020, wasn't it? And at the end of 2020, about 88 million people had been infected worldwide, with about 2 million people having died from the disease. In the United States alone, 21.7 million people were infected, and 365,000 died from the virus. It affected every aspect of life, employment, education, family, and extended family, entertainment, travel of all types, Olympics, <laughs> and even worship. Almost every day, we found new ways our lives were disrupted. In addition to the pandemic, there was also great social upheaval in America. Racial tensions ran high. Political tensions ran high. Some people found those tensions ran all the way into their families with family members pitted against one another. But there were, and there are, bright spots during all this where God and God's people have been hard at work sharing God's love. YouTube church, there'll be some people watching us today. Facebook church, church in a parking lot. I uh, love the sound of up in uh, Spencer when we, you know, he's risen. You know, hear the horns honk in the parking lot, you know. Uh, that was a neat experience. Um, those, those things now are continuing to be commonplace as we find that they are ways of reaching people for Jesus. That's a good thing. Holy Communion has been shared and served in several new ways. The Word of God is preached and people have responded. We've, people have found us that way, all the way from Texas and other neighbor, communities around here in different ways on the Internet. The Word of God is preached. People have responded and the work of God goes on. I know this is a scary thought, but Zoom, everybody kind of cringes a little bit when you hear Zoom, right? We've had so many Zoom meetings last year. Zoom small group meetings for church. You can have Bible study via Zoom. Uh, You know, people have done it all over for thousands. People are caring for one another. Families join together in chat rooms, right? And said hi to each other because they couldn't physically hug each other. Youth groups have met electronically in ways some of the adults don't even understand. How do you play Jackbox uh, using your smartphone, you know? Um, The work of God goes on. And the word of God and the bread of life is shared and the work of God goes on. Jesus came to earth over 2,000 years ago to bring salvation and hope and God's love and forgiveness to a world desperately needing it. He was fully God and fully man. He was no ordinary man. But he brought, and he brings, the love of God to a world where hope was all but gone. And the work of God goes on. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God pass as all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing as we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of church. Our prayer response this morning is, hear our prayer. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Incline now your ears to hear us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, preserve the pure proclamation of the gospel throughout all the world. Thwart all false teaching and the lies of Satan. And draw many to yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, cause our congregation and all congregations in our circuit, district, and synod to flourish and thrive. Make them strong witnesses to their confession of faith, eager to show mercy on account of your steadfast mercy. Knit us together in unity of doctrine and love for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, give strength and courage to all pastors and those who assist them, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression. By the example of Elijah and all who have gone before them, Bring them comfort through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, bless all families and homes that one generation may tell the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. We also ask you, Lord, especially bless those who have anniversaries. We ask your blessings on Dan and Lori Havronic, David and Mark Fuscher, and Jerry, Julie, and Jerry and Julie Carlson. May they grow more in love with you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers for our nation. Cause us to live in harmony with one another and free our citizens from want, suffering, danger, and fear. Lord, in your mercy, show kindness to the sick, especially Frank Moe, who's had some uh, brain cancer surgeries this week. Be also with those in our prayer list, uh, including our missionaries, Jan Englehart and Chelsea Irwin, all those who are battling COVID, Dan Gillespie, Pete Stark, Pastor Riding, Bill Kruger, Beth Martinson, Rich Gates. Julian Lichty, Carolyn Stewart, Braden Wilkie, comfort the family of Tyler Fafar, and thank you, Lord, for successful hand surgery for Gary Hines. Never let them be in doubt that you hear their prayers. Relieve all pain and provide for those who suffer from any kind of hardship. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, we ask you to bless those in our congregation who have birthdays. We ask your blessing upon Teresa Chul and Sarah Wilson, Harley Clausen, Jennifer DeWitt. Scott Fisher, Sharon Larson, Deb Waterman, and Fonda Knudsen. Blesses your servants with special days of celebration, and you are blessed with your love. Lord, in your mercy, comfort those who mourn by Jesus' word that he is the bread of life, and anyone who eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, in your mercy, Father of our risen and ascended and glorified Lord, who has promised that those who believe in Christ as the true and living bread will never hunger nor thirst. By your Holy Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith. Give us grace to live out our baptismal lives in repentance and forgiveness. And keep our eyes ever focused on the life that never ends, knowing that you will raise, up on the, raise us up on the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Normally at this time, we'd collect our offerings. Uh, we still have our offering plate in the back of church. It'll be right up in a little bit, and you can leave that on the way out if you didn't get a chance to do it yet. And as well as hope you'll sign an attendance card, let us know of your attendance, and hope they'll come join us again. Also, uh, during the week, you can drop off those uh, gifts and uh, offerings, too, to continue the ministry here at Christ Lutheran. Thank you for your faithful gifts. Any announcements? Looks like Neil's ready. It's Jeremiah time. Come and join us at Bible study this morning in the South Lodge. Uh, Jeremiah gets released from prison twice. Wow. That's notable. Other announcements. Wednesday night, we're having a Christ-like teacher's meeting. 
Uh, hope that you can be there. If you know someone that would like to teach Christ light or would like to encourage them, make sure to ask them. And uh, we'll be making plans for launching Christ light. Uh, also today after church, we'll be taking mites uh, for uh, LDML and their mission projects. So again, uh, they had a great convention. have been faithful for many years. Uh, their foundation is so strong now that they take all the operating expenses from the foundation so that all the mites go directly to every mission project. There's nothing taken out of them for any other expenses. So uh, your mites today, those coins uh, of those, will be blessing uh, ministries throughout our country and our world uh, through Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Uh, Bible study for the guys on Tuesday morning. And uh, as we kind of keep, keep information out, uh, our TriPoint Parish, uh, we don't have Sunday evening worship here in O'Neill anymore. Uh, but there is Sunday evening worship in Lynch at 5 o'clock. So if you know someone that hasn't been to church yet today and would like to do that, 5 o'clock will be worship in Lynch. Uh, as well as, uh, the, since we don't have Sunday evening in O'Neill anymore, in order to keep having uh, at least one of our services in our TriPoint Parish have communion, uh, the brothers and sisters at Spencer at Emmanuel uh, are having communion on the second and fourth Sundays. So we'll be having communion today uh, up at Emmanuel Spencer on second and fourth Sundays here in O'Neill, first, third, and fifth Sundays. So those are your opportunities for worshiping in our TriPoint Parish. Anything I forgot to remember? That is wonderful. I invite you to please stand then as we sing the offertory. What shall I render to you? in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benedict. Oh, sorry about the offering there. You mean keep me standing there, Greg? I should clear your throat a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for these gifts and for Greg's patience. Now receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord who says shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for a closing hymn number 924. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. <laughs>